My name is Lisa, and I'm a working mother living with my husband Kirby and our elementary school-aged daughter Madison. Kirby is a door-to-door -door cosmetics salesman, well-known in the neighborhood for his sweet talk and skillful salesmanship. Maybe influenced by her father, Madison has a way with words and is incredibly good at reading the room. Just this morning, as I overslept a bit and was rushing to get ready. Mom, it's garbage day today, right? I've already gathered it up. Oh, that's right. Madison, thank you so much, even down to setting up the new trash bags. Well, I am your daughter after all. I also took care of the dishes, so I'm off now. Thank you. Take care. Madison is an incredibly efficient and helpful child, which is hard to believe for someone in the lower grades of elementary school. Despite my guilt for having to work and leave her in care since she was a baby, Madison has grown into a loving child who enjoys helping out. At my workplace, there's a deep understanding for working moms, so I've had no issues balancing work and parenting. Now, watching Madison grow up before my eyes has become my greatest joy. However, there's also a problem that troubles me. I'm home, oh man, I'm exhausted. Again with the morning returns? Madison already left for school, you know? We haven't seen each other for nearly two weeks, this is getting ridiculous. Seriously, you're so nagging. And look at your makeup, so sloppy. You should learn from my clients. They all look beautiful and radiant even in the morning. There's a world of difference. Whose fault do you think it is that I'm so busy? If only you would help out, then maybe I could spend time on makeup. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna take a shower and then sleep. This man, showing no intention of helping around the house, is my husband, Kirby. Due to his sales job, he often has to attend drinking parties, which frequently result in him coming home in the morning. His lifestyle has led to him barely crossing paths with Madison, and I've repeatedly asked him to come home earlier. However, Kirby only offers temporary solutions, and I'm at my wit's end. That day, while I was working from home and Kirby slept until noon, he woke up and immediately said. Ah, so sleepy. I'm hungry, make me something. There are leftovers from last night's dinner in the fridge, please have that. I have a document that I need to finish today. Don't you want to serve your husband a fresh meal? You're so cold. What are you talking about? Coming from someone whose wake-up time is unpredictable. I was getting fed up with Kirby's self-centered behavior and constant complaints, without considering the family's needs. I work and have a sufficient income, so I wouldn't be in trouble even if Kirby were no longer around. My parents are also still alive and well, so I have a support system in place if needed. To be honest, I was considering divorce, but then… Look mom, look at my new headband, dad gave it to me, isn't it cute? Yes, it looks very nice on you, Madison. One of dad's customers is skilled in handmade crafts, she's said to give it to her daughter. So, this decoration is handmade, how amazing. I'm glad for you, Madison. Yeah, Dad always gives me lots of presents. Seeing Madison talk about Kirby with a smile makes me hesitate to take her father away from her because of my own circumstances. In fact, I've heard from a single colleague that every time her child cries for their father, it breaks her heart. If enduring this situation means preserving Madison's happiness, then I've decided to maintain the status quo. One day, I was surprised when Kirby came home earlier than usual and I said. Welcome home, you're earlier than usual today. What? Is it wrong for me to come home early to my own house? Of course not. I didn't mean it like that. Well, never mind, I'm in a good mood today. After all, today's our anniversary. Oh, you? You remembered our wedding anniversary? I'm so happy. I just got back and haven't prepared anything. Hey, hey. You're getting moved too soon. I haven't even presented my surprise yet. A surprise? This is the first time. What is it? Listen. You and I are happily divorced. Today is our divorce anniversary. What? Divorce? What are you talking about? Where's the surprise? I filed the divorce papers on my way home from work today. The clerk at the office accepted them, so we're no longer husband and wife. I'll take care of Madison, so you need to pack your things and leave this house immediately. What? You filed for divorce? But I don't remember signing or stamping anything. That's not the important part. 
The important thing is that a divorce form with both our names was accepted. I'm sick of you. Coming home to cold meals and no comfort. I don't even want to see your face, so please leave my sight as soon as possible. Wait, this is too sudden. I don't understand what's happening. Ah, uh, you really do have a talent for exhausting me. Listen, I'll say it again, okay? You and I are divorced as of today, so you need to leave this house. No matter how much I questioned him, Kirby kept insisting that since he filed the divorce papers, I should leave. However, I haven't even seen the divorce papers, let alone filled them out. I thought it was our wedding anniversary, but it turned out to be a so-called divorce anniversary, a concept I can't possibly accept. After arguing for nearly an hour without reaching an agreement, I sighed out of exhaustion and said, I understand what you want to say. But are you really okay with this? Ha! Huh. What do you mean? I don't need your concern. If that's what you say, fine. But don't come to me with regrets later. You're being so roundabout. I'm just fed up with you and can't take it anymore. I won't regret it. If anyone will, it'll be you, wishing you had been more devoted to me. Ugh. Say whatever you want, I'm not troubled by the idea of divorce. But, I'll be the one taking care of Madison. What? Madison is mine, isn't she? She's so attached to her dad. I'll make you understand that. Where is Madison now? Madison isn't an object. Don't talk about taking care of her when you don't even know where she is. Wait. Before you leave, tell me where Madison is. I quickly packed my things and left the house. After spending some time at a cafe, I picked up Madison from her friend's house where she was playing and then went straight to my parents' house. A few days later. Hey. I know you're here. Give me back Madison. Please, don't make a scene in front of the house. It's disturbing the neighbors. Then just hand Madison over to me quickly. I said I would take care of her. I also said that I would be the one to take care of Madison, didn't I? Besides, Madison has said she wants to stay with me. No way. Lisa, just because I, who adored you, have given up on you, doesn't mean you can lie. Face reality. You can't make Madison miserable with your selfishness. I could say the same thing to you. That's right. I really want to live with mommy. I hate daddy. Madison, but you said you loved daddy. Are you being influenced by mommy? What are you talking about? I like the daddy who loved mommy. Mommy isn't happy when she's with daddy. If daddy doesn't care about mommy anymore, then I don't need daddy. Wait, Madison. That's because mommy was being too selfish. You get scolded when you're selfish, right? I was just pointing it out to mommy. The selfish one is daddy, right? You hardly ever come home. Mommy does the work, takes care of the house, and looks after me, always saying she loves me. Daddy, you just give me presents. Mommy is priceless. Where did you learn to say that? Madison, please don't misunderstand me. It's true I've been busy with work and haven't been able to give you much attention. But my feelings for you are genuine. The sentiment in the gifts is priceless. Like, Daddy, at least your white teeth and your words are genuine. I've always polished them well, both my teeth and my sales talk. So that's how you've been getting along with so many women. Quite an accomplishment for a family man, but Madison doesn't need a daddy like that. Lisa, did you tell Madison such things? I can't believe it. I'm disappointed in you as a mother. What are you talking about? I would never say such things to my daughter. That's right, you don't have to tell me for me to know. It's a woman's intuition. Trying to attract daddy's attention by lying to his daughter, those women are quite something. Is this child really Madison? Where's the little girl who used to run after me, calling daddy? Anyway, I haven't betrayed mommy. It's all a misunderstanding, Madison. Enough. Stop lying to Madison. We have gathered plenty of evidence of your infidelity. Exactly. I have the photographs as proof, and here's the mistress too. Ow, that hurts. Let go, big brother. There's no better evidence than this. Be prepared, we'll be demanding a fair amount in alimony. And who might you two be? And who's this lady with you? This is Detective Noah and Attorney Mia. I called them. Playing dumb won't work. This woman, your mistress, has admitted to the affair. We've got all the photographic evidence, so there's no escaping this. Oh, Kirby save me. Ha, Mia, you said your name was, right? 
contrary to expectations of conceding in the face of his mistress and numerous pieces of evidence, Kirby suddenly took Mia's hand. That strong gaze, fearless attitude, pride in your work, everything about you is wonderful. Huh? What's he starting to say now? He's hitting on her mom. You were hit on like this before, right? It's a dark history I'd rather forget now. Ah, uh, when I'm looked at with those cat-like eyes, I can see no one but you. Lady, please give a moment of solace to a poor man. Ah, uh, Kirby. Your white teeth and dazzling smile are impressive, aren't they? Mom, were you courted like this too? Please don't ask. It's my life's biggest plea. Too many people here. Let's go somewhere we can be alone. There, let me tell you how much I long for you. Here, let me carry your bags. That black one too. Hey, what are you doing flirting with another woman? Whoa, Rhea, did you wake up all of a sudden? Calm down, it's just an act. Act or not, you're still trying to pick up another woman right in front of me. I'm shocked. Madison, did your ears hurt from that? I'm fine. So he's not just a smooth talker after all. Rhea, it's a misunderstanding. I've always been only for you. Don't try to fool me. You were just about to cheat right in front of me. No, it's not like that. I was just trying to manage the situation. Rhea would get caught. Oh, blaming me now, huh? No, not like that. I thought if I could persuade the lawyer, it might work in my favor later. Are you kidding me? Is your love something born out of profit and loss calculations? Don't joke. Love is like jumping off a cliff. Trying to deceive with sweet words is villainous. A villain lecturing another villain. Wondering where the fact that she's the mistress went. Tried to stage a drama, and this is what happens. Truly hopeless. The wicked punishing the wicked. This is an intriguing development. We were bewildered by this unexpected turn of events, but of course, Kirby wasn't the type to back down just like that. Rhea's straightforwardness is wonderful, but, they say in love, the one who falls first loses, right? If I had been serious about Lisa, I would have been under her thumb for life. That's kind of lame, isn't it? Oh, what is he even talking about now? I cheated because Lisa didn't devote herself to me. Who else is as cool, fun, and exciting as me? I'm one of a kind. Well, that's true, but Rhea can't bear to see Kirby looking at anyone else. Don't worry, right now, only Rhea is in my eyes. Rhea, why forever love? Oh, Kirby, I, I love you so much. They're back to their usual selves. Ugh, what kind of farce are we being subjected to here? So the wicked remain wicked. Disappointing. It doesn't matter what Lisa was like. You cheated, Kirby, and that's what's wrong. I have a nature that women love. Everyone seeks my love. I can't just ignore them, right? So now, I return my full love to Rhea, who pours all her love into me. That's all there is to it. Man, this is frustrating. This guy's the type who makes enemies of all men in the world. He sure has a way with words and looks. I can see why women fall for him, including my past self. But isn't your hair starting to thin on top? Isn't it about time to retire? Madison, have you been watching daytime dramas or something? Ahem. Besides, you can only afford to be so confident for now. I'll be claiming alimony from Kirby, including a share for Rhea. I planned for that from the start, so it's no problem. Love and money go hand in hand, after all. Such noble convictions. But you only make 200,000 yen a month, and there's the house mortgage and Rhea's debt. Can you really manage? Ha! Huh. Rhea's debt? What are you talking about? You didn't know. Rhea has a considerable amount of debt. And you're set as the co-signer. What? This is the first I've heard of this. Is that true, Rhea? I have loads of debt, because I wanted to show the perfect me to my beloved Kirby. It's only natural to spend money. And I wanted to contribute to Kirby's business. You can't be serious. The money you've been spending on our company's products was from debts? Of course. It's all debts. I've never worked before. So the sales you made are ultimately coming back to haunt Kirby. Quite the boomerang. Not much of a salary and on top of the mortgage, you have the debts of someone who's not even family. Your life's in a tight spot. Well, do your best, I guess. Finally realizing the gravity of my initial question about whether he'd be okay with the divorce, Kirby began to panic. No way. 
Rhea, it's not too late, let's start working together. If you love me, let's share the joys and hardships together. Ahaha, <laughs> Kirby, you're too funny. My job is to support Kirby, that's settled. Oh boy, you're stuck with quite the character there. My condolences. Well, I happen to know the people you owe money to, so I'm going to take you to do them now. Where, where? I want to go too. Sounds fun. Madison, you stay home, okay? Mommy will buy you a strawberry cake. Wait, wait. Going to the debt collectors, this can't be good. Eh, we're going to meet those scary men? Rhea doesn't feel like it. I knew it. Lisa, let's start over. I was completely in the wrong. Such a complete scumbag. Sadly, the spell you once cast on me has long since been broken. Why don't you try casting it on the gentleman we're about to meet? Good luck. Eh? Kirby loves everyone? Wow, so global. It's not about being global. Madison, convince mommy, please. Madison is local, so I can't listen to anyone but mommy. Sorry. Did she just casually drop the opposite word? Madison, what's your IQ? All right, all right. No more shouting. Let's go gracefully. Departure time. Somebody! Help me! Thus, Mia took the two to their creditors, where they were intimidated and placed under surveillance until the debt was fully repaid. Kirby had to meet higher sales quotas than ever before, leading to aggressive selling and eventually getting sued. Burdened with even more debt, he was forced into labor hell, juggling multiple jobs day and night. Rhea, Kirby's mistress, was forced into labor at a store affiliated with the creditors, with all her earnings confiscated. They were provided only the bare minimum for living and had no means of contacting the outside world. Both physically and mentally exhausted, they lived solely for the purpose of repaying their debts. As for us. So, you three were classmates in elementary school? Yes, we were. I was so surprised when I went to the office. Ah, uh, Mia and I moved away when we went to middle school. Yay, and we both returned to our hometown to start our own businesses. But Noah becoming a detective, who would have thought? Well, he was always chasing someone around, so maybe it suits him. Really? Noah had someone like that? Hey, Mia. Nothing, Lisa. Here, have some pudding, your favorite. Oh. Thank you. Let me try it. Delicious. Noah, you remember my favorites well. Well, yeah. A detective needs a good memory. Got it, Mia. Let's go to the amusement park, just the two of us. Right now, Madison, you're always so fun. Sure, let's go. Bye, Mom Noah. Be happy. What? What's going on? Wait, Madison, Mia. Wait. This is too sudden. I'm not ready. Help. Watching the two leave like the wind, Noah and I couldn't help but smile awkwardly. Then, it was just the two of us, reminiscing about old times. It felt as though time had rewound, and we were back in our elementary school days, enveloped in a fresh, youthful atmosphere. The words I couldn't finish on graduation day. I wonder if Noah remembers them. Seeing him blush and look troubled, I feel one day I might be able to continue where I left off. With thoughts of a bright future, we waited for the return of the two who had gone to the amusement park together. If you enjoyed this video, we'd be thrilled if you subscribed to our channel. Subscribing means you'll receive notifications for new videos, keeping you in the loop with all our latest content. Your support is vital to our growth. Let's enjoy and grow together.